Now, every year, Amnesty International evaluates the human rights situation in countries around the world. While global attention is firmly focused on the COVID-19 pandemic, human rights violations crept into many spaces, from Angola to Botswana, Uganda, and to Zimbabwe. People have suffered abuses and injustices in the past 12 months, both in East and Southern Africa. Now, let's take you to Shanila Mohammed, who is the executive director of Amnesty International South Africa. Shanila, good evening and thank you so much for your time. Let's perhaps begin with a broader context that we've been working with globally when in terms of the studies that you've done and the impact that you have seen around COVID-19, the associated restrictions and how that has curtailed people's rights. Good evening, Cathy, and good evening to your viewers. Well, let me just start off with COVID-19 itself. And, you know, uh, the recent um, uh, numbers that we've come up with uh, in our research of, of health workers that have died because of COVID-19 is now sitting at 17,000 around the world. So already, you know, you can see that uh, not just uh, people uh, who are uh, affected, um, you know, but by getting the disease or their families, but the people on the front line have really been badly affected by this. So, you know, the rights of the of the um, health workers has been really uh, badly affected. And then when you look at, you know, other things that, that are linked to COVID, um, you know, there's been a shortage of water. We've seen that in South Africa where people cannot uh, wash their hands or do the basic things they need to keep safe. It other parts of the world, we've seen shortage of medication, we've seen shortage of hospital beds, hospital space. Um, you know, in certain countries in Africa, there's been a total denialism, like in Tanzania, around the whole issue of COVID, which has, you know, puts many, many, many lives at, at, um, at stake. So COVID in itself has been a huge uh, space where rights violations have been taking place. And then the final thing I just want to say about COVID, Cathy, is that now we're looking at globally, the whole nationalism around the vaccines mm -hmm. you know it's become a battle for who gets the most vaccines and you know one one of the things as amnesty we're doing is we're supporting the south african government who have been challenging at the world trade organization the whole issue of trips um and generic uh, and and patent rights around vaccines because you know the, it's it's absolutely horrendous that countries are now fighting to to hold on to vaccines or or buying an overflow of vaccines when other countries need them more so really Really, Kathy, the human rights situation in the world is really a mess at the moment. Uh, COVID has added to that mess. But in addition to that, we're seeing political messes. You know, in Myanmar, we've seen the whole situation of, you know, um, protesters being killed. Uh, we've seen, you know, in, in Mozambique, right next door to us, we're seeing, uh, you know, in Cabo Delgado, we're seeing armed militants uh, linked to Al-Shabaab who are killing civilians. In Zimbabwe, also next to us, we're seeing, you know, human rights being violated on a daily basis, journalists being arrested. Uh, you know, so 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 the story goes on and on, and I feel like you know, in the past year or so, with uh, COVID uh, in our midst, human rights violations, according to our assessment, have gotten much worse. And you know, we haven't even started to talk about um, gender-based violence and the rights uh, of women in this whole story. Uh, Shanila, about six months into the COVID-19 pandemic, the debate around access, in particular for vaccines, started becoming more pronounced and people were speaking, about, speaking out against the possibility of vaccine nationalism. And there was really a push from different activists for the world to respond to the moment differently to what previous experiences have been. Why do you think that that has not happened? And what does it say about some of the multilateral organizations that have been formed to facilitate talks and discussion among different countries and whether or not they play a significant role ultimately when it comes to having the concerns of the global community be embraced by those who are part of the developed world. Well, Cathy, you know, if we go back in our own history in South Africa around HIV and AIDS, um, we know 
uh, that at that time the, the lack of political will and the and the and the pharmaceutical companies who were really uh, being um, uh, you know who were not uh, providing these drugs at affordable rates uh, was a huge problem and we're seeing this whole cycle repeat itself. So again, you know, in answer to your question, what we're seeing is uh, basically big pharma and pharmaceutical companies and corporates that have teamed up with uh, governments in order to violate human rights. And this seems to be a cycle that continues and continues. And I think, you know, what's even more frightening uh, about this cycle is that in front of people's eyes, people are dying. And even that is not triggering the type of, of uh, united response that we need. Instead, we are seeing countries that are closing ranks. We are seeing countries that are saying, look, our people are more important than yours. And, and at the end of that spectrum, uh, Kathy is always the poorer countries. And one of the big concerns we've had as Amnesty International is that um, that Africa is once again going to become the testing ground for some of these vaccines that are not that have not been properly tested. And this is one thing that we are, are keeping a close eye on because you saw that during HIV and AIDS uh, pandemic, you saw you're seeing it now. I mean, you know, there are vaccines that have not been approved, like the China uh, vaccine, like the vaccine that is the Sputnik vaccine from Russia, and and yet they are being used in Africa. And I think you know, again, you know, is the message they're sending out loud and clear once again is that African life matters less than other lives and I think that is something that our leaders need to to stand up and and really fight against because at the end of the day if they don't fight for us who's going to fight for us Kathy so you know I feel like once again the world has gotten into the cycle of some lives matter more than others we saw that you know throughout our lives with colonization with racism with everything that has come along and this is no different you know there, there is a choice of whose lives matter more and and uh, you know the richer countries are making those choices and pharmaceutical companies are just doing what they always do which is to make profits over the lives of people Sanila before I let you go it was very easy for governments to implement restrictions when COVID-19 first started to uh, spread into different countries it's over a year now are we seeing the same speed of the restrictions uh, being lifted well, I think, you know, again, I think the, the, the way in which restrictions are being lifted is not, uh, is really about the economy rather than about safeguarding populations from COVID. And I think, you know, we've seen variants of the strain starting to come out. And I think as we move into winter, Kathy, we're going to see more and more cases come up again. It's a cycle. And until people are getting vaccinated in the way that they should be with pro the right vaccines, we are not going to see the stop. So, you know, I think the decisions to lift um, uh, restrictions are is really about trying to safeguard the economy and you know I mean I don't think that people realize that difference it's not telling people that COVID is gone it's saying listen we have to take off some restrictions because if we don't our economy is going to sink and and what the government needs to do is focus on getting the right vaccines for everyone who lives in South Africa. And I think that it has got to be their priority. And, you know, um, and to be honest, I've listened to people speaking ahead of me, and they have all been pointing to the same thing, that during this time, education, water, uh, you know, sanitation, all these things are suffering. But I think that we do have to make sure that people are safeguarded with the right vaccines. All right, let's leave it there for tonight. Shanila Mohammed is the Executive Director of Amnesty International South Africa.